well, no, we don't trust our government. I don't trust them at all because, you know, <laughs> when you really read what they're what they're saying or what they show you on the face and then you look at what they're doing, thanks to my father, do what I say and not what I do never made sense to me. Hello, 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 Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Uh, the good news and bad news about money. And just a little back history. This is the this was the year Rich Dad was created for. And it's right on time, right on schedule. I was a student of a man named Dr. R. Buckminster Fuller. He's a futurist. And he wrote a book called The Grunch of Giants. And Grunch stands for Gross Universal Cash Ice. Came out, in, I think, in 1984. So this is 40 years afterwards. And as uh, Jordan Peterson talks about, you have to wander in the desert for 40 years. So we've been wandering in the desert for 40 years out here in Phoenix, Arizona. And, you know, things, in my opinion, Fuller was exactly correct. Our wealth has been stolen via our money. And that's why Rich Dad was created. That's why I started teaching people how to use debt instead of cash, because money is debt today. And um, and I'm prepared. That's what I can say. I'm a prepper. And I've been waiting for this time. So our guest today is a longtime friend, but we never have never got on this program together, Lynette Zhang. And we're in a similar business that we're hardcore, I would say, real money advocates. Absolutely. Gold and silver. So really, Lynette, after all these years, seeing you at different shows, I'll see you at VRIC, Vancouver Resources Investment Conference, end of January, I mean, January 20th. Yep. And we talk about our favorite subject, gold and silver. So now that long way of saying it, welcome to the Rich Dad Radio Show. Robert, I am so happy to be here finally. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm really looking forward to VRIC too. It's, it's yeah. a great show. And please say hello to Daniela. I, mean, I saw her before, she, she's on my show before I met her. So you, I may have you on. And so Daniela came from that, that world of Kit Co and all that. So she's a great person too. Yes, she is. So, I, love, I love working with her. Yeah, she's spectacular. So a quick question, I guess, more specific questions. Number one is what is a currency life cycle? And number two, what is hyperinflation? Number three, why are you into numismatic and what is numismatic? Because it's a huge subject, the subject of gold and silver. Absolutely. And great questions. Yeah. And, you know, I was a stockbroker at Shearson uh, in 87, when I stumbled across what's called non-dollar denominated bonds, which are simply bonds that are issued in different currencies. But I, that's when I started to study currencies. And I started to see when I was looking at all these different currencies and the history of them, I started to see this pattern, this repeatable pattern that happens every single time. And when you stop and think about it, everything has a life cycle. I guarantee you that, you know, I have an eight year old granddaughter at eight years old. She is in a much different part in her life cycle than I am at 69 years old. And you're not going to look at her and think, oh, she's about to be 70. Just like you're not going to look at me and think, oh, she's about to be nine. And frankly, Robert, currencies are no different. You can watch them evolve over time and they all have a very, very similar pattern. So simply put, if you know what to look for, you can see that we are in the very end stages of the, actually the big fiat currency. So it's not just the US dollar, it's this global debt-based currency system. Yeah. We are at the end stages. So and. and let, let me give you some examples of history because <clears throat> we've all heard of the Zimbabwe dollar. We've heard mm -hmm. of the Confederate dollar. And there was the dollar during the Revolutionary War was, um, you know, I mean, they, currencies start and die. Yeah. And uh, so the, there was a Confederate dollar here. The, the, the Continental, right, was a revolutionary dollar in 1770. And of course, the Zimbabwe dollar, I got a lot of those, you know. Yep. And I, <laughs> so, uh, so the, can, are you gonna, is the US dollar gonna be in that category or is it, is it there right now? 
Well, in reality, it's there right now. There's even officially virtually no purchasing power left in it. That's why they were testing out negative rates, because how do you go below zero? Well, you go to attack principle now that they've they've removed via inflation all of the purchasing power. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's a big key. And we are seeing patterns. I mean, war is something that happens every single time there is a currency regime shift right. and it really right. is about distraction and that's that's the aren't there some wars going on today There's, what israel hamas uh china taiwan uh what's the other place ukraine and russia are we there right now yes we are absolutely there right now yes so you were right you said this is what rich rich dad was built for this moment in time, a hundred percent. This is what I've been groomed to do too. Yeah, yeah. this is it. We're at the I'm end. Older than you are. My my wake up call came in sixty four, when I was looking at the a Kennedy half dollar. It was copper. I'm going. What are they doing? And that's called Gresham's law. So would you explain Gresham's law to everybody? Well, that's where bad money. What people do is they hoard the good money. So. The Kennedy half dollar that was 90% silver and then use the half dollar that was clad on two sides. And yeah, you can see the line between them. So it's where where bad money chases out good money. Good money is hoarded. And we're there right now. So this is my question because it's so frustrating for me, Lynette, because I have friends, family members and all this. I say, why don't you buy some silver? No. <laughs> Why don't you buy some gold? No. Why are you saving dollars? Because my, my my mommy told me to save uh, dollars. What do you say to those people? I get so tired of talking to them. Well, you know, you have to understand, Robert, <laughs> that we've been sold this lie since the day we were born. And when they created this whole debt-based system, they knew a lot of things, but they knew two key things. Number one, they knew that people marry the legal money of the state and they cannot help but think that at some point it will regain some of its former purchasing power. So it never does. So what do you say to stupid people who are saving dollars? Well, I say to them to be diversified. <laughs> diversified doesn't mean stocks and bonds because those are intangible. Diver <laughs> It means you need, you're laughing, but I mean, you're right. People think they're diversified because this is a training. What do I think? Actually, it's better if you ask me, well, what do I do about those people? I just put together a little five minute video just to try and open their minds. And it, it it's on showing loaves of bread. And I think you've seen that with me before. We're back in 1913 when they started this experiment you could have a $1 bill, a $1 gold coin, which is, you know, 20th of an ounce of gold, or you could have had a silver dollar and bought 11 loaves of bread with any one of those. Today, if you have a dollar bill, you, maybe you're buying a, a quarter of a loaf or less yep. with, right? With your silver dollar, you could still buy those 11 loaves of bread. But yeah. with that $1 gold coin, depending upon whether you're looking at spot, that's like 56 loaves or so, or you're looking at the original old collectible one. Here's one. Can you see how teeny weeny that is? That'll get you, I didn't check it today, but somewhere around 335 loaves, <laughs> right? So they know, you know, the inflation not one man in a million understands inflation. That's the other thing that they knew. No. So, and inflation causes nominal confusion. So, so you had a $20 bill 10 years ago. You got a $20 bill today. It's still a $20 bill. Nominally, they're identical. But what that would buy you 20 years ago, what it buys you today, vastly different. Right. <clears throat> So I bought my first gold coin. I was in Hong Kong. It was a Kruger and I paid $50 for it. It's now <laughs> hidden someplace outside of Switzerland, you know, because <laughs> I don't want my government to visit me about my money. So my gold coin I bought in um, the South African Kruger and is now in um, 
outside of Switzerland, but I paid $50 for it. And today yeah. it's about $2,200 with premium on it. It hasn't changed at all. So the dollar has gone down. So I'm a quick question. Do you have a video that people can see that can, may open up their minds? Working on it. It's worked on some people. Um, and yeah, you can find that on the ITM channel. What's it called? Not either, It's going to be on the front page and it's just like a five minute video that those that understand what's happening can, because you can't get people to look at more than five minutes. But it, it, and it's not to scare them. It's just to open up their minds so that they can start to look at things just a little different because that's what you do so well, Robert. Right. And that's what I try and do. It, it's amazing when you look at things from a different perspective, just even doesn't have to be big, just a little bit. It's amazing the differences that you see. Yep. And I've been, I've, you know, I've been to Zimbabwe and all that. So I, it's not scaring me. I'm going, this is what's happening. So let's, so let's go into what's going to happen because we have the end of a currency life cycle. It's like you don't find you don't find people working for Confederate dollars or the continental or Zimbabwe dollars, but people are still saving that crap. I can't believe it. But anyway, so what has it happens at the end of a cycle? Is it always hyperinflation or is a currency just go to toilet paper? Well, that is hyperinflation, right? <laughs> but because toilet paper is a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> it is, and, and the currency is has more value as paper than it does to purchase things. It's good but, paper. <laughs> yeah, it's scratchy kind of, but um, <laughs> we, well, we we don't, we've yes. gone downhill fast, Lynette. We've gone downhill. <laughs> we have, Robert. <laughs> but um, actually what happens is as the inflation bites, which again is where we are right now, like they want us to believe that inflation has come down so much and now it's safe to lower rates again, or they're at least keeping them the same. But the reality is, is that the regular, normal, general public are not feeling that anything is getting better for them. It doesn't help them that maybe the prices aren't exploding up as quickly as they were. And they absolutely are realizing, even though they had some increases in wages, that it did not and does not keep pace with that inflation. No. So what happens is that the masses lose confidence in the currency. And once that happens, then you will see that the hyperinflation begins. Because what makes it very simple is that there's only one way to fight inflation, and that's with deflation. And only one way to fight deflation, and that's with inflation. So, you know, when people think that they're different, they're the same, they're the same coin, they're just the opposite side. And frankly, that's really where we are. And you mentioned Zimbabwe, you know, a, a couple of times in here, because all confidence in the Zimbabwe dollar is lost. And so what they do last year, they came out with physical one ounce physical gold coins. Now, the masses, the general population can't afford a one ounce gold coin, but the upper echelon, that 1%, maybe even the top 10%, they can afford that. And to, I don't, I don't really think it's about democratization. I think it's more about them getting the general public into their system. They've come out with a quote unquote goal backed CBDC, central bank digital currency, but it's not convertible into the gold. So do they have the gold there? No. Do they not? But, I th but you see, we're, we're making the point. We could be talking, well, those people in Zimbabwe are really stupid, but Americans aren't far off. Correct. We're highly educated, stupid, poor people. You know, my, 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 you know, we came off the silver standard in, uh, 64 gold mm -hmm. standard in 71 with Nixon. Mm -hmm. So I started saving all my silver coins. I, I used to caddy in Hawaii, you know, caddy, make my dollar. I go to the bank and I trade it in for rolls of dimes and quarters and half dollars. And I pull out all the real silver and hide it. And I had this whole bag of real, what they call it dirty silver. Now I had a whole bag of it. 
And so I went to 65, went to school in New York. I read the Communist Manifesto for economics class. That was eye opening because I said, yep. oh my God, we're a communist country because the Fed's communist. Absolutely. And, and I come back to Hawaii and I asked my mom, I said, what happened to all my coins? She says, oh, I spent it. Oh. And oh. How, how much do you think a 10 pound bag of silver coins are worth today? God, you know, in terms of, yeah. that's my point here. Mm -hmm. You can't teach stupid or poor people about money because they're so programmed to save money. And, you know, you being a stockbroker, my, my, my other favorite subject are mutual funds, which are certificates of depreciation. You know? I just crack up. But anyway, we'll come back. We're going more into, so we're now into your currency life cycle. Yes. Inflation, deflation. I want to yes. let's, let's talk about um, why you're a numismatic coins because I'm not, you know, I'm just into raw. I, I own gold mines and silver mines, but I, I, I like to buy it by the ton, not by the ounce. <laughs> right. So, so we come back. We we're talking more with Lynette Zhang, and we're right back. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Kiyosaki, co-host of the Rich Dad Radio Show. And I want to thank today's sponsor, our friends at Gold Alliance. You know, we should all be concerned about high inflation, a looming recession, the very troubled banking system, and out-of-control spending in Washington. And the fact is, during every major crisis in U.S. history, many of those who fail to prepare watch their savings, investments, and retirement funds plummet while others with the foresight to own gold help preserve their wealth and purchasing power. Now we're facing several major crises at once and we may soon face even more economic turmoil. So please don't wait, consider gold and put yourself on the road to financial peace of mind. The new free 2023 gold guide from our friends at Gold Alliance can show you how. Just visit www.freegoldguide.com forward slash Robert or call 1-800-473-4585. Republican governor and conservative commentator Mike Huckabee says Gold Alliance is the only gold provider he recommends to his friends and family. Please visit freegoldguide.com forward slash Robert or call now at 1-800-473-4585. Thank you. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait. Access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about the dollar. But good news for all those of you who are stacked silver and gold and Bitcoin because our money is fake. Our, our guest today is actually a longtime friend. And You know, the reason that show is so important to me because for years I was one of those startup gold mine companies. I was a junior miner. Mm. And so I, I know it, I know that show very well. I'm pitching gold deals. My first gold deal was a gold deal in China, in Dalian, China, took that thing public. And guess what the Chinese did? <laughs> did they nationalize it? <gasps> Surprise. I don't, yeah. I don't eat Chinese food anymore. You know what I mean? But the good news, China's crashing right now because they made the same mistake in real estate with Evergrande and all that. So China's in trouble, but China's producing more gold than anybody else. Central banks like the Fed and the Bank of Japan are hoarding gold right now, 
and my relatives are saving dollars. That's because we're Japanese. We had never learned the lesson. Japanese like paper for some reason. I can't understand them. But anyway, we're going into numismatic and all this. Would you go into dif- different ta- different sha- differentiation? I, I own the gold mines and the ore and the production and the cash flow and the, and the royalties. But I don't, so I, don't, I don't work with numismatics. Would you explain that whole side to us, please? I will do that very happily because fortunately for me, I had a wonderful Uncle Al who was a high-end antique dealer and he was my favorite, you know, and, and I was his favorite. And so one day my parents and I were at his house and he goes, come here, I want to show you something. And he took us in a back bedroom where he had these two tall floor safes and he opened the doors of those floor safes. And he said to us, if anything should happen to me, Aunt Bertie will be well taken care of for the rest of her life because of this. And what I saw when I turned around and looked were you could not fit even one more $20 gold piece in those two safes. Now I was 10 at the time, so I don't really, I didn't really fully understand what I was looking at, but it certainly made an impression on me. But during that period of time, 1964, it was illegal to hold more than five ounces of gold other than the way that my Uncle Al was holding it. Look, Robert, you you even said it yourself. What did the Chinese government do? They nationalized. Desperate governments do desperate things. But they also typically write in the rules, just like the U.S. did in 1933, that gold coins pre-1933 with a special value to collectors were exempt from confiscation. So I would say knowing now and looking back that he had at least 3,000 ounces of gold in those two safes. And he was holding it in the only way that was legal. Basically, so, basically numismatic means an old coin and things like this, and they couldn't take it. But if it was a new gold coin, it was guy Roosevelt, another communist like Biden, they took our gold. So that's why when I, so when Lynette's on there, I, I know a numismatic person, they're panicking all the time. They're gonna steal your gold. They're gonna steal your gold. Well, they have to go to Liechtenstein to steal my gold. You know what I mean? But anyway, it's because well, we don't trust our government. Well, no, we don't trust our government. I don't trust them at all because, you know, <laughs> when you really read what they're, what they're saying or what they show you on the face and then you look at what they're doing, Thanks to my father, do what I say and not what I do never made sense to me. So I listen to what they say and then I watch what they do. And when you see on a global basis, central banks and governments buying and holding more gold than they ever have historically, why would they do that? They can come to take bullion gold, the new gold, because they're controlling the spot price. Right. And the eminent domain laws give them the right to do that, but they have to pay you, quote unquote, fair market for it. Well, they manipulate the market, so so big deal. And then even if they pay you a big premium because they don't want you to squawk, you know, most people don't understand what you and I understand about what's happening. Well, this one, let's go macro. See, what happened was 64 the dollar, the U.S. was on the silver standard up to 64. Then mm-hmm. 71, we're on the gold standard. Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. I was flying in Vietnam in 72, and I bought my first gold coin at, uh, in, a, in a shop in Hong Kong. And they said, if you take that into America, you're, you're uh, smuggling. So I decided to be a smuggler, you know, and all this. <laughs> but what happened in 71, this is the most, what Nixon did was the dollar became debt. And what became the new money were things called T-bills and T-bonds. And that's why when, you know, financial planners and real estate, I mean, and um, stockbrokers tell me it's safe as a bond, I go, you gotta be kidding me. I don't trust bonds as far as I can throw my building here. And so what's happened just now, didn't, they had a bond auction and nobody showed up, the treasurer or the Fed? 
it's it's the auctions have been very very light, much what because mean? Joy what, Luck broke, what does that mean? What does that mean? They're light. The people aren't showing up to buy our bonds. Exactly. Exactly. Holy moly! That's exactly what that means. And so it's trading. Even the Japanese didn't now, show up. Hands. <laughs> Even the right. Japanese, they're, they're not that bright when it comes to money. They didn't no. show up. No, but let's go back to 19, you know, 64. And in that period, because what a, a lot of people don't realize is that on a global basis, you know, we had in the 40s with Bretton Woods, the U.S. dollar promised to be tied to gold at $35 an ounce. And then all the currencies tied to the dollar. And then in the 60s, well, because we had, you know, we had the Vietnam War, we had we had some wars in there. So we were printing a lot more money and really breaking that agreement, reneging on that agreement. And there was a massive run on the dollar in the 60s. And so by the time Nixon took us off the gold standard, but handed over the power to the central banks, we had less gold in our coffers than we did prior to the confiscation in 33. Is so that, had we not done that, we would have had no gold. Yeah, but isn't there a question right now how much gold is in Fort Knox? Of course. And th that's why it took so long to give Germany back their money or France back their gold and all this stuff. My, exactly. My, my point here, again, this is, this is for all your friends and family right now who believe in saving money and having your money in stocks and bonds and mutual funds. They're, they're stealing from you. I mean, we don't we don't give financial advice here. We're a pure educational show, but that's why I'm so happy to have Lynette Zhang on here. She's ITM trading. You do a lot of education, you know, very professional education on gold, real money, and silver. No Bitcoin. I like Bitcoin, but I just don't like the dollar. I don't save money. I use debt, and it drives yeah. people nuts. And I don't have a four hundred one k. I go why because that's how they steal your money. <laughs> and it makes it quite visible. You know, I mean, look, I was a new stockbroker in the 80s. And I remember them taught all the, this discussion on globalization, globalization, but also getting assets in house because the whole system was transitioning in the 70s and the 80s to transitioning risk. Remember when it used to be defined benefit pension plans? Oh, yes. So for a company for 30 years and you knew what you were going to get on the end of that, even though it'd buy you less, you still knew that. Well, in the 70s, you know, you talked about the 401k. The IRAs came up in the 70s, were created in the 70s. 74, and then the 74 to be specific. There you go. And then and then the um, 401ks. And it was really transferring the risk from the corporations because now what you had were defined contributions. Yes. Right? But if you hear the word defined blah, you're thinking, OK, it's like the same thing. But it was taking the risk and putting it on the general public yes. who has no clue about this stuff, but they're getting lots of fat fees for it. And this is so critical that people understand it. There is a chain, a legal chain of ownership. What you are when you are working with a stockbroker and you buy an ETF or mutual fund or any of the annuity, any of that garbage, you are merely the beneficial owner. And then there's a whole lot of beneficial owners between you and the legal owner up on top which is seed and company DTCC. And that's, you go to court. I mean, did anybody go to jail in 2008? And what happened to JP Morgan with that fine? What, what happened with JP Morgan just recently? Yeah. I mean, fines are just part of doing business now, aren't they, Robert? They got fined nearly a billion dollars for stealing money, basically. So point here to Lynette, tell, tell us more about ITC. I have the Rich Dad Radio Show. I recommend you have friends who are Japanese like me <laughs> who like to save dollars. I can't believe it. Or have a 401k because it's safe. And they like bonds because it's safe. Have that friend listen to this podcast and then put them on suicide watch. But anyway, the thing I like about, I'm, I'm, I'm a shock jock, Lynette. 
but at least <laughs> ITM has a lot of educational information. So tell Absolutely. us about ITM and information education that people can get so that they can make their own decisions. We don't give investment advice. Right. I, I, you know, I think everybody should do their own due diligence. Yes, and yes. So, we have the website, so there's, uh, and we've got the YouTube channel where we now have Taylor Kenny as well as Daniela Combone and me, Lynette Zhang, all bringing you different aspects. My personal goal is to translate financial noise into understandable language because here's my favorite question, Robert. How many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? All the time. Exactly. So we believe in educated choices that put your best interest first. Yes. Because you're the one that's going to feel the impact of these choices. Yes. And then um, tell us about your bug out house. <laughs> well, <laughs> Not, you know. Don't tell us where it is, but. <laughs> no. Bug out house. I mean, look, 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 the thing I love about Lynette, man. Unlike Biden, she practices what she preaches. That's, totally do. Yeah. <laughs> I totally do. Because I think you have to have them with all these. I'm not against the migrants. I'm against Biden breaking the law and taking that wall down, opening the hole. And and I'm also I'm also when 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 governments get scared, right? They make choices. And that's why I'm with the collectible coins, because they're less likely to be confiscated should they choose to do an over confiscation. But in uh, during the Cerveza virus, when I'm walking around my little urban farm in the center, dead center of Phoenix, <laughs> I'm going, aren't I great? Because I didn't have to worry about toilet paper shortages or food shortages or, or any of that. But there were riots near my home and there were riots near my children's home up in Scottsdale and Paradise Valley. And I thought, there's the hole. So I went out and it took a while to find, but I found um, a wonderful off-grid property. I have 41 acres and it is completely self, well, I'm, I'm working on having it self-sufficient. So last spring we put in our orchards. We have a production orchard and as well as a kitchen orchard, we have uh, three geodesic dome hothouses. Ah, Fuller, Rocky Fuller's domes. Yeah. 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 I mean, you'll, I'll have to bring you up there. I mean, it's kind of a bumpy ride because there's not really a road to it, but um, it is phenomenal. And so if it gets really bad in the city, then I have a place I'm, I'm uh, creating enough food. There is enough food right now. If, right. if this happened tomorrow, I could support 40 people up there. Right. I also have cars with no, that in case they knock out the electrical thing, I can keep, still keep going. But yes. I was at our Vancouver Resource Investment Con Conference last year, and as I said, I just bought a Lair 60, a jet, because my bug out is now in South Carolina. And I, I want people to know this is Gresham's Law. Gresham's Law says when bad money enters the system, good people go into hiding. And it's getting that bad. I was on the border, you know, down by, I own a lot of property in Bisbee, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And there was this high school kids down there with vans, you know, eight passenger vans. And they were t picking the guys coming through the Trump's wall wide open. And they were charging them X amount of money to drive them north. I mean, I can't believe what this guy Biden is doing, what the Democrats or con liberals or the academics are doing to us. So anyway, that's why I talk about this bug out places and this. I'm sure you're armed, aren't you? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yes. Whether I'm down here or I'm up there. Yes. yes. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank, please go to ITM Trading, check out our, she is educational. I'm a shock jock. I like pissing people off. You know, <laughs> but I just can't believe people want to save toilet paper. I mean, the, the, in the dollar bill. You can buy Charmin, it's a lot cheaper. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, th I think it's really, I think it's important that people wake up and get prepared while they still can. Yeah, well, and I, I respect your background in, in uh, the stock market and being a trader and all this stuff, but also you practice what you preach and you have your own bug out houses. So thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. So we come back with a final word.
Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news of 2024 election year. Ho- hopefully, somebody will replace Biden. You know, I love Trump. He and I wrote two books together. He's a good man, but we're a screwed up country right now. But anyway, uh, I want to thank Lynette Zhang, ITM Trading. Please check out her sites. Lynette and I are both going up to Vancouver, British Columbia. The VRIC is January 20th and 21st. The reason I recommend it, you know, resources or commodities like oil and gold and silver and all that, they're the hot new product this year, not technology, not technology. So the VRIC is where you have all the startups, all the young guys and women who are starting their gold mines and silver mines and projects all over the world. So if you're interested in startups and precious metals and all that, the VRIC, January 20th to 21st, is the place for you to be. I was there for years with my little startup, gold mine and silver mines, and did very well. I still go there every year because it's where you get, it's where you meet the real people. But it's it's also, I don't recommend people investing in anything. It's the highest risk of all startups. So it's called the VRIC. Jay Martin puts it on. He's a great young man. But please go check it out because I'm really I'm really concerned. You can tell Lynette and I are concerned. So I'll leave with those final words. If you don't go to the VRIC, I call it the five G's is how you prepare for it. Number one, you have to have gold. Okay, G. Ground, a safe place, grub, food, gas for car and a gun. We're that close right now. This is January 2024, the election year. We're at war and our dollar is in trouble. Inflation is going all over the place and we have incompetence running our governments. Thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. Stay tuned. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.